Okay, so today we are starting on page 147 in your digits um, student companion and we're skipping the launch today. Um, you'll see a picture of a bunch of envelopes that says friend one and friend two. We're going to skip that, but I do want you to write some notes underneath it. So what I want you to write is subtraction method and this is just another method of elimination. We can remember that um, from yesterday. So subtraction method and we're using elimination. Well, with subtraction method, basically all we're doing is multiplying one of the equations by negative one. So I just want us to write a note underneath subtraction method and their note about elimination. I just want you to write um, multiply, multiply one of the equations by negative one, then use addition method. So it's basically the same thing, addition method. And we'll see what subtraction method looks like. So if we go ahead and turn our page, we're on 148, and it says, got it. Which system of equations can, solve most if, can you solve most effectively with subtraction method? Well, if we look at the first one, we see um, our x's have the same coefficient of 1, and we see that they're opposite numbers. This one's a negative 1, this one's a positive 1. So this one we would use addition with, not subtraction. So this one we would use addition. And you can kind of cross this one out because we're only trying to figure out which ones we would use subtraction method with. Well, the second one here, we see that our coefficients for y are 1 and 2. Our coefficients for x are 1 and 5. So neither of our coefficients on our variables here are the same. So we wouldn't use subtraction method here because one thing we need for addition and subtraction method is the same coefficients. Here it was 1. So over here for number 3, this one's obviously going to be the correct one, but we want to see y. We have a positive 5x in our first equation and a positive 5x in our second equation. Well we see that both of those um, coefficients are the same but they're not opposite signs. What we need is opposite signs. So what we want to do is multiply one of these equations by negative 1 which is just the one and only rule for subtraction method that I just said on the previous slide. I'm going to choose to multiply this one by negative 1 and we're not really going to solve this out but I just want you to see how you would do it. So the first equation stays the same. The second equation now becomes negative 5x, right, because we're distributing this negative 1. Then we're going to distribute this negative 1 to positive 2y, so this now becomes a negative 2y equals negative 1 times positive 20, negative 20. And now what you would kind of do is you would kind of scratch this out not all the way because you might need it later but now you would use addition method right here so 5x plus a negative 5x is going to give me 0 which eliminates my x's negative y plus a negative 2y gives me a negative 3y and that equals 15 plus a negative 20 which gives me a negative 5 now we don't need to solve this out but that's how you would solve it Okay, so now what I want you to do is you try page 149, number one. So go ahead and pause me here. It's the same question um, and see if you get the answer correct. Okay, so this is kind of something around what you should have gotten. And notice how I justified these. So I didn't just circle the right answers and I made sure that um, I said which one was used best on the other one. So for A, we see that both of our x's here have the same coefficient and remember for subtraction you just need the same coefficient they can both be positive or both be negative so this one you would use subtraction method on of course we'd have to rearrange these to go variable variable equals a number but we could do that for b we see that this one here we need to rearrange to look like this so I put a little note over here this would actually turn into oops, 5r minus 2s equals 9 if we rearrange these numbers here. 
which would mean we'd use addition method because both of our s variables have 2 as their coefficient, and this one has a positive 2, this one has a negative 2. Since they're opposite, we use addition method. Here, right off the bat, we can see positive 8b, negative 8b. We use addition to eliminate that b, and we'd solve that one out. Now over here, for c, we also see that we use subtraction method because um, our q variables both have a positive 2 as a coefficient, and if we want, oops, that is a really bad line. If we wanted to solve this out, we would just multiply one of these by negative 1. Let's say this one. And we would say 6p, oh no. We would say this now becomes negative 4p minus 2q equals negative 2. And remember, for elimination, you're just trying to eliminate a variable. We can kind of lightly cross this one out. Our eliminated variable is q, so 6p plus negative 4p is 2p. That equals 2 because 4 plus negative 2 is positive 2, so that would mean p would equal 1. We would put that p back in to see what q equaled, but we don't need to do that because it's just asking what is the most efficient way. Okay, now move on to page 148 where we are going to solve the system of equations using subtraction. And what I want you to do is write a line right here because I'm going to have you do a U try right next to this. So make sure your work for this problem doesn't go past about halfway over. So here we go. We see that our x's have the same coefficient of 3, and they're both positive. So we have to multiply one of these equations by negative 1. I'm going to choose the second one. So, when we multiply this by negative 1, we multiply each term by negative 1. So this is now negative 3x minus 2y equals negative 16. Well, now we basically just set this up as the addition method, right? We kind of lightly cross this one out. And we see that we can now add these. Our coefficients of x um, are opposite. So, 3x plus a negative 3x, and that lets us eliminate our x's. 4y plus a negative 2y gives us 2y. 20 plus a negative 16 gives us 4. Now to solve for y, we divide both sides by 2, and we get y equals 2. So remember our answer is in an ordered pair, so 2 is going to go in the second spot. Now what do we do? We take this 2 and we substitute it in to one of the original equations. I'm going to go ahead and substitute it into the first original equation. So I say 3x plus 4 and instead of y I'm going to write 2 because y equals 2 equals 20. So 3x plus 8 equals 20. Subtract 8 from both sides. We get 3x equals 12. Now we divide both sides by 3. We get x equals 4. So up here in the x spot, you need to put 4. Now what does this mean? What does our answer mean? That means if we were to graph these two lines, these two equations, the graphs would cross or intersect at 4 comma 2. Okay, so now right over here, what I want you to do is try this problem. In the space that you left right over here, go ahead and try this problem right here. Solve the system by using subtraction. Pause me here and see if you get it right. All right, and here's your answer. You should have multiplied the bottom or the top one by negative 1. It doesn't matter. And you got negative 2x plus y equals negative 1. So remember, when you multiply a negative by a negative, you get a positive. So now that makes our y's opposite. This y was negative y. This y was positive y. And now we just use addition method here in the red. So 3x minus or plus negative 2y just gives me x. 
and x equals 3. Then we put that 3 back into one of the equations. It doesn't matter which one. I chose the first one. And I got y equals positive 5. Originally, I got negative y equals negative 5, but as we all know, we need to, we need to divide by negative 1 to get a positive um, y. So my final answer being 3 comma 5. Um, notice, or know that this means where these two graphs would cross. Okay, so now let's try the last got it. You have only $1 bills and $5 bills in your wallet. You have 33 bills worth a total of $93. How many of each type of bill do you have? Okay, so of course the first thing we want to do is we want to define our variables. So we are going to let x equal $1 bills. And then we're going to say let y equal $5 bills. So we need two equations because remember we're doing systems of equations and then we're going to solve for each type of bill. So we know we have 33 bills total. So that's simply x plus y equals 33. Because that's saying $1 bills plus $5 bills is 33 bills total. Well now we know that the amount is $93. So we know we have $1 x bills plus 5 y bills because uh, each y is worth five dollars and that our total is going to be ninety three dollars well now that just set us up for subtraction method because our x's have the same coefficients and we basically just need to pick one of these equations times it by a negative one and solve for x and y I'm going to pick the top one to times by negative one just for a little change here so now I'm going to rewrite this right here underneath. So I distribute my negative 1, just like always, just a little bit of a bigger um, numbers. So we get negative x minus y equals negative 33. Well, now we have addition method, right? Remember, I kind of crossed this one out. And I'm going to add together these two equations. So x plus negative x gives me 0, that's eliminated. 5y plus negative 5y gives me 4y. And that equals 93 plus negative 33, which gives me 60. Alright, now in order to solve for y, I divide both sides by 4, and I get y equals 15. So what does that mean? That means there's 15 $5 bills. That also means that the number 15 goes into our second spot in our ordered pair. All right, so now how do we solve for x? Well, I'm going to show you a little trick. Instead of putting um, y back into something that has a negative or something that has a variable, uh, or not a variable, a coefficient connected to it, I can put y back into this original red equation. That's why we only cross it out a little bit so we can still see it. x plus y equals 33. I'm going to rewrite that over here in red. So x plus y equals 33. That's one of our original equations. I'm going to substitute this y in for that y right there. So I get x plus 15 equals 33. And that's an easy equation. Basically, what plus 15 equals 33? Well, we can subtract both sides by 15. Some of you might already know the answer. And x equals 18. So this means that in your pocket you have 18 $1 bills and 15 $5 bills for a total of $93 and 33 bills. Okay, page 149. What kinds of systems are easiest to solve using subtraction? Well, that's when our coefficients, coefficients are the same number and sign. 
So meaning they're both positive and both negative. Um, so they're the same number and the same sign, meaning both positive or both negative. All right, go ahead and get started on 6-6 homework. It is posted on your digits to-do list.